Thank you, hottie. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to say too much up here. Uh, so many of you are here because you're my wonderful friends and family and people who worked on this movie. Um, so I'm not going to say too much. So thank you for all of your hard work. And I'm so honored to be here at my home festival. <laughs> I'll save the tears for later. Thank you. Um, I want to share a little story time because I've heard some good stuff. I first um, met Miss Roxy at the world premiere of their AWC project in 2011, so it's about 10, 10 years. 10 years ago. And um, and then I, I emailed her the evening that I wrote the notes for the show. Like I, I got a little choked up just kind of witnessing witnessing your talent blossom from short form to feature form, and also just seeing how your energy and your authenticity resonates for every project and the village that you bring around every project. So on that note, um, can you just tell us like a little bit of the origin story of how you came to this and, and also the team that came around for it? Oh my god! <laughs> AWC program and like I think you know once we were done with this movie I was like please 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 can I please play a LA Asian because like it would mean so much to me to just to just have it come full circle you know and I've been doing <laughs> many of you know I just do a lot of genre stuff lots of horror science fiction it's the first movie I did that didn't kill anybody <laughs> very gory had a lot of feelings um, <laughs> instead of like blood and uh, I think it was a very rewarding experience. I just have to thank. Um, there's another screening happening right now. Uh, CGV is happening with this, so a lot of the cast is at that one as well. Um, so thank you all for coming out to this one. This is like a celebration for all of the people who are coming out to my crew. And you can stand up and acknowledge everybody. Can acknowledge who you are, please. Everybody that has worked on the movie, stand up. And we shot this in February of this year during the pandemic and um, you know I was on back-to-back -back projects I was doing a lot of you know horror stuff killing people and I was quite burnt out and then Autumn my producer came to me with this script and she's like just read it and I was like oh man I don't know like I'm kind of tired but then like reading like 15 pages of the script I was like I want to do it you know like just like explore a lot of mother-daughter themes that I've never had the opportunity to explore more deeply and something just felt really right about it. So then, um, you know, it went into production really quickly, I think a month after that. And then I got all my family to like come on board and make this with me. Kelly Hu, Patricia Velasquez, Shannon Doherty, all my queens from, you know, when I was growing up, it was like a wet dream getting to work with them. And like every time I look at Kelly, Kelly's just like, you know, it's hard to make her look like a normal person because um, she's just so gorgeous and you, you try to make her look sick and like obviously we did the best we could but she's still just <laughs> yeah. she's just, just Kelly who it's just really annoying um, and then uh, but even Kelly she said that she's never had the opportunity to play roles like this because you know she's always been pigeonholed into being a sex icon you know and even in her 50s she looks like goddess you know um, <laughs> And you should check her Instagram. She did a really hot photo shoot a couple days ago, and that was. Um, it takes one to know one, goddess. Yeah. Oh, when I first watched the film, I was like, oh, snap. Like, yeah, Kelly looks like a normal human being that's surviving an illness. Yeah. And there's something, I mean, she's not a superhero, she's, but there's something very special of her, the, this sort of like reservation. Like, it wasn't like, I'm Kelly Who. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But I, I, can you talk about working with Kelly and like I, and bringing that performance to the screen? Also, like understanding that your background is genre. This is a, a little bit of a departure of where your bread and butter is. Yeah. Um, so Kelly brought so much to this project. Like she said, this is the most prep she's ever done for a project um, because I think we all know someone who's affected by breast cancer, and it's still very much a taboo subject to bring to the forefront. I know in Taiwan. When my family's going through it, we don't talk about it. We see it as a way of like a courtesy to not talk about it. But it's sort of, you know, it's like we could do something about it if it's caught early enough. You know, I just wish there was more discussion about it. So I'm just like honored that this is like the centerpiece film for a Lifetime's um, breast cancer campaign next month. But I think Kelly, Shannon, everybody who 
I couldn't believe was able to work on this movie, came on this movie because we all know someone that's affected by it. So, um, you know, I think, I don't want to speak for them, but you know, it's like they all applied what it would feel like to go through that, to be scared and not be able to have a voice and not know who to talk to. And coming from a very different generation, a different experience, you have Talia's generation, which is like our younger generation, is very woke and progressive and willing to take you know, an active part in starting that. And then you have her who's just like, I felt like I did everything that I had to do. But it's like very hard to think of myself, to put myself first when you know all of these other challenges came into your life. So I'm just really grateful because it was a very collaborative process and every actor added color and depth and Shannon Doherty, you know, she uh, she had a very public fight with cancer, breast cancer, in um, 2018, and then she, uh, you know, had remission, and then it came back in 2020. So now she's like, you know, this is the first movie about breast cancer that she's done. So she is such an inspiration. You know, she's still living with it, stage four. Um, but she comes to set, you know, she's just like, I could be the longest person living with cancer, you know, and she's just been an inspiration throughout this whole process. So I just think I'm still learning, you know, and I'm just grateful for this opportunity to allow, you know, just to be able to helm the project and be around all of these incredible people that really serve to tell the story. I love your um, can you talk a little bit about, I guess, your approach for the film? Like, again, it's not genre. Yeah. And, I mean, very frank, this doesn't feel lifetime me. Like, this feels very, I mean, there's a, such a strong sort of, it's woman-centered, right? But there's, it's about the sort of woman-to-woman -woman relationship. Can you talk about, like, sort of your approach of how you wanted, how you wanted to look, or your intention of, you know, how to, you know, bring Kelly and Sylvia's relationship to the screen? Well, I'm very lucky because I have a fucking bomb ass team. So I have Daphne Wu, my cinematographer. Stand up, please, please. Just where you are. There is Daphne Wu. We got that gorgeous woman. Rochelle Blanc says, stand up. My production designer, and that's good. Yeah. Murph, where are you? Brianna Murphy. There she is! Look at her serving. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, and, and they, in terms of tone and visual tone, you know, these ladies really <laughs> brought it together, you know, and then uh, of course I don't want to, oh, the rest of my crew is amazing, yes, but it's like, I, I am not, I know my strengths and my flaws as a director, and when, <laughs> because I've done this long enough to the point where I know I can't do everything, so I really allow, you know, there's like a certain direction, color language, and also emotional language, character language, and building that foundation, and then really empowering, you know, these amazing people that I respect and adore to help me put it all together. Also, Don Money, I don't know if you're here. Where is he? Okay, anyways, Don is my editor. Um, he's amazing, that, that's all I have to say. So I'm just like in awe of everyone I work with all the time, and I think as a director, you have a vision, but you're like the vision is just like a spine you know but like everybody else is like fat blood skin you know flesh like everybody else makes the whole body so i am nothing without my team so that's how it came together i guess <laughs> now um in previous episodes we normally will pass the mic for any questions in the audience but if, if i expect the whole space if there's anyone that has a question to go ahead and raise your hand old school style I, have, I see a human in the back with a long sleeve shirt. Hi, Roxy. That was so good. Yeah! Thank you, Nikki! I heard that you shot this in 12 days. Yeah! How? Oh, yeah. 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 How? And no overtime! How? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we were up early, actually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very important to me that everybody is happy and healthy working on a set, especially with, you know, the pending IOC strikes coming up. <laughs> Our, our industry is known to be very toxic and for overworking, you know, the crew members. And I used to be uh, below the line as well. So I was, I had experience in uh, post-production as an editor, and then um, I was an AD. <laughs> it's so funny. It's constant. I don't know how. Um, that's why I was never hired. Um, but I worked in production. I worked as a PA, and I was just like. No, if anybody walk, walks on my set, I, it is my responsibility to be prepared as much as possible. And uh, the schedules are very scary, so sometimes they're like 12 pages a day, multiple locations sometimes, but I think when you have 
um, like you really trust the people around you to work with you and you design a game plan but you also allow space it is all possible like anyone who says anything is impossible is full of shit because like only in true limitations can you really discover your true potential as a leader and as a creative you know so like don't let that i just i just think i was on a show recently i'm not going to say what it is where like, the other directors get pissed off if one gets overtime and one doesn't and i'm like I don't know about you. I'm like, but I tap out after 12 hours. I was like, I cannot work. And if I'm I'm off set, like right when it wraps and people are still wrapping out after me, that's completely unethical. So sorry, this became a rant about something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, there's, I mean, I wish I had more time. I mean, the, the last scene, um, you know, the party scene, we only had an hour to shoot that and I almost had like an ulcer. Uh, and I don't want to do that ever again, but like, you know, I, I was lucky that my, my actors are so good, they could just really be in the moment and pull out those performances. But uh, sometimes you gotta deal with what you got, you know? Um, and this is a low budget movie that somehow all these amazing people come on board to do. And it was a lot of fun. And oh, we had spirit days, very important. Um, <laughs> Space Buns, yes, uh, is iconic in, uh, in, our, in our team. And then we also uh, had Lunar New Year, you know, when Kelly was talking about the dumplings. That was actually on Chinese New Year. So uh, Kelly brought, you know, like red face masks for everyone. And then oh, we all dressed in red. Oh my God, all of us looked so hot that day. <laughs> Like, I remember it, I felt so cute. <laughs> it was a very emotional scene. I social media. I think I saw you. Oh, yeah, we'll post more but, um, yeah. after. Yes, yeah, this is out now. I can post more. We dressed up like pirates on the last day. <laughs> yeah! It was, uh, Brie has a video of me, my, my, my amazing AD, Brie over there. Queen, stand up. Let's acknowledge Queen Brie. Yes! Because of her, we could finish in 12 days and 12 hours, all right? So, um, yeah, I was like getting really serious. I was wearing a hula skirt and like a pirate's hat that I stole from Thor. Thank you. Yeah, I do want to um, move into a little bit like, I, there's a lot of family love in the room, and I, I, I want to also like acknowledge a little bit of the BC family. Like, yeah. I, I'm nosy as an auntie. Yeah. Um, I want to know what, what does it feel like to have like this little home, like a homecoming. This is like a ten year homecoming. You had a short. I know you had another short, The Visit, which I love. Woo! Um, and now feature, like, um, you know, how does it feel, and what's next for you? Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. 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 You know, it, it's interesting. It's funny because my agent and my manager are in this group as well. I was like, what, what is next, guys? Um, but it's it's funny because I, I can't. I love VC so much. I don't think you understand. Like, this is my home. Ah, yeah. I grew up here, you know, and like I learned so much, and you guys gave me my first opportunities to believe that I could be someone. So, you know, to any, like. <laughs> young girl like it's possible you know so <laughs> she voted on her first red carpet i did i did and you know i just i just think it's so meaningful and like i i would rather be here than anywhere else so thank you so much for having me I love you. on that note we're going to wrap up the evening please uh, interact with the goddess roxy outside Woo!